today we're here in beautiful Logan, Utah, and we are on the Logan River, and we are going to demonstrate the use of the flow probe current meter to measure the discharge of the Logan River here. Uh, in a previous video on our site, you can see how to do this using the float technique by using sticks and calculating the velocity based upon how fast a floating device goes a certain distance down the channel. The flow probe here will actually tell us the velocity of the water passing through this small chamber. You'll see that there's a small magnet in here and as it spins it creates a pulse that the computer then counts and turns into a velocity of feet per second. One of the nice things about the flow probe is it does have some measuring, uh, a measuring scale here on the side which will come in handy when we're out in the channel and it's extendable. There are multiple models with different lengths at this point, we're at a fairly shallow uh, location, and so we won't need to extend it. The flow probe has an arrow here that shows you that the water should be coming in this direction. And so let's go ahead and give it a try. First of all, we're going to measure the velocity at multiple points across the channel. And then after that, we're going to take a staff gauge and measure depths across the channel. Previously, we've measured the width of the channel at 43 feet, and we'll need to use that in our calculations. You want to stand out of the flow range that is coming to the meter, but you will be able to insert the, the probe into the water, hold it vertical, and then on the display, you will see a value for feet in seconds. And one of the nice things about the flow probe is that I can uh, hit this reset button and one of the values it calculates is the average. So as long as I'm holding the flow probe in the water, it is averaging multiple times the measurements that it's taking. So what I'll do is I will hit reset when I'm at the top and then I'll slowly have the probe descend to the bottom and then bring it back up in a slow and controlled manner. Okay, so we measured at this point approximately a couple feet in from the side a velocity average of 1.8 feet per second. So I'm just going to list those as I go across the channel. So I took 10 depth reading or velocity readings across the channel and now we need to take depth readings to be able to calculate the area of the water flowing through the channel. Again, the more readings you take, the more accurate that you will be with this. But again, uh, a channel this size with a pretty good level bottom that's not gonna vary much. I would take a minimum of 10 readings. Uh, the way that the uh, professional hydrologists tend to do this is they will do it about every foot and calculate uh, the area uh, with that with a little more resolution. So I'll come in about a foot from the side. So 1.1 feet. Go a little bit further out. So now we've measured an average velocity with the flow probe across the width of the channel. We've gotten some depth readings across the width of the channel. And we know the width of the channel, the surface water width of the channel, is 43 feet. 
and you average all of your readings so that you can get an area and a an average depth and an average velocity. So the math is fairly simple. I take it's the to calculate the CFS, I take the area, which is the 43 feet across, times the average depth of 1.17, which gives me 50.31 square feet. To get the cubic feet per second of flow, I simply times that by the feet per second of velocity, which is 2.39 which gives me 120.2 CFS. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you and please visit our website listed below at inmtn.com.